So I'm actually a streamer, bro. I ask people a question that they would never expect to be asked while playing Warzone. The question is, what do you think about God? Do you think he's real? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm a okay. uh, Catholic. Is your faith an important part of you? And if so, how? Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's like a building block of everyday life. You know, how you should live your life. Like it's the foundation of everything we should, we should do almost. Yeah, it's like a standards for basic morality. So I'm not Catholic. So I'd love to hear from your perspective, what does it mean to be a Christian or what does it mean to be a Catholic? I mean, as in me being specifically Catholic, that's kind of tough. That, that's a tough question because I don't know. There's so many different religions and stuff. Uh, for me, yeah. it's uh, all my family's pretty much Catholic, so you know, it was kind of born into it. Um, I guess. I asked my question to you as if I'm, I'm one of Jonathan's friends that calls him Atticus, right? And I were to ask you, hey, Atticus, Jonathan, how do I get to heaven? What would you probably say? That's tough. Uh, you're just gonna have to, everybody gotta work, walk their own path in life and you have to figure that out for yourself. That, that's that's all I could can say. All right, so it's like be a good person, be true to yourself type of, type of re way? Yeah, that's... That. <laughs> Yeah, everybody got to figure that out for themselves, but uh, I don't think I, I can tell you, you know, what you need to do or anybody at that. What if the answer I were to say is you can do nothing to get to heaven? That means uh, it depends on what you mean by it. I mean, that's like you can say you can do nothing. I mean, that's not really up to you. It's up to God whether or not you go to heaven. This is true. I like where you're going on that. What's the standard in which God would use? Because he's the one controlling who walks in and out of the gates. What's the standard God would use to say like, oh, you are good enough to get into heaven and you are not good enough to get into heaven? They have the Ten Commandments, of course. Okay, well, I know. I'd agree with yeah. that. And what most Christians, Catholics would call the Ten Commandments, Commandments is God's moral law. So it's what God uses to justify if someone's a good person or not. I think if we were to all look at ourselves in the sights of the Ten Commandments, every single one of us would be seen as not a good person. Honestly, I think if I died right now, I'd probably go to hell. Okay. Why? Because you don't feel like you've been good enough? Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I could be better. Literally same. If I were to be judged off of my man. work in order to go to heaven, I wouldn't be allowed in. I think we're sitting in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, basically, uh, so my grandma's probably like the, she devotes her life to God. Yeah. And I think that that's basically really the only way, you know? I bet there's moments yeah. before that she didn't. You know what I mean? Like when she was younger or whatever, where she she struggled with those things too. You know what I mean? Man, honestly, I don't think so. <laughs> well, your, your grandmother is an angel. She was married when she was 16. Uh, I mean, they're like old school Hispanic. Okay. I've never heard my grandma cuss. I can't judge her, but I think if that's somebody that I could look up to if I was looking for her holy advice talking about me and you right like me and you we uh like i've lied before i don't know about you i've lied before i've stolen things before i've definitely not loved the people around me perfectly in my life you know what i mean and all of this is sin right and we're we're saying that like if god were to judge me and you now based on that resume me and you wouldn't be able to go to heaven because we're not good enough you know what i mean yeah so we've already come to the conclusion that this sin thing where we mess up and don't love God perfectly, don't love each other perfectly, it separates us from being able to have a relationship with God and eternal life, right? Yeah. But what about this Jesus guy? What have you heard about this Jesus guy? He's the son of God, uh, died for our sins. Okay. So that we could go to heaven. Yeah, there we go. So Jesus, yes, he's the son of God. He is also God at the exact same time. So Jesus, God himself died on the cross for our sins, right? So for us to get to heaven and have a relationship with God, it's actually really simple. We don't do anything outside of trusting in Jesus that when he died on that cross, his sacrifice was enough. If we truly do trust in Jesus that he died on the cross for us, then our hearts will be changed through repentance. We will then start to do these things like, your, like what your grandmother has done for God. Not because we have to in order to get to heaven, as a prerequisite, but rather in response to the grace God has given us through what Jesus has done. Does that make sense? Yeah. The full on circle would be, have you yourself trusted in Jesus's death on the cross for your salvation so that on the day of judgment, 
you'd be able to go to heaven, not because of your own merit, but because of what Jesus has done. Man, I kind of feel like a little bit more to it like that. Yeah, Jesus died for us, but it's just like our opportunity. You still need to make the right choices, you know? Okay. So the, what the Bible would say to kind of like that, that would be called works in the Bible. There's basically three categories of things we're talking about here. We have faith in Jesus, right? And then we have salvation in which is what we get. And then we have works. And what a lot of people try to do, or they think that they have to do, is in order to have a relationship with God, they have to do all these works first in order to be saved. But rather what the Bible teaches is that there's nothing that we have to do that Jesus has done all the work and that in trusting that Jesus has done all the work, we will then start to do these works that you talk about, these decisions for him, not because we have to, but because we want to. Drop money I mean, it takes uh, self-sacrifice. Yeah. Man, I got some cash. Yeah. Jesus says that for those who will actually follow him, will pick up their cross and follow him, which means to put to death their desires. That's not a prerequisite to salvation, but rather a result of salvation. Yeah. I just, I want to let you know that in order to get to heaven, ain't nothing you have to do is trust in Jesus. Zone. Has anything been holding you back from like <laughs> growing in faith or anything like that? Uh, yeah, man. Just work too much. I do Can't keep the too. holy day holy. Are you talking about like going to church position. and stuff like that? It's been like hard to find time to do that. Yeah, pretty much. You ever thought of starting it with yourself and, and opening up the Bible? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I used to carry one with me, but then I just been so busy and stressed out. I just see myself just Requesting trying to relax on my days off. Yeah, I had a good excuse, but I, I kind of got a suggestion for you. You might think it's stupid. So on on your phone, there's an app in which you can download the Bible. Oh, that's cool. And it's some I've used. And a lot of people, I come across a lot of people and, you know, myself in seasons, like I found myself really busy. And a pastor told me this once that whenever he gets in his car, he turns on one chapter of the Bible and he just listens to one chapter of the Bible. Max it ever takes is like four minutes, right? And he just listens to one chapter of the Bible. Because back in Jesus's day, that's what they did. Not everyone had access to the Bible, so they listened to it. And I guess that's my encouragement to people these days is like, hey, like you have the ability to actually listen to the Bible. It, it's, it's in your pocket. So someone just asked me this question in chat. Can you speak as to how one can continue to believe in a God that allows school shootings and war in the world? Everything happens for a reason, seems like an easy excuse. I mean this with no disrespect. That's a, a tough question. one. Uh, so long as there's right people up. around, uh, there's always going to be evil. When you die or, or what, and you finally rest, I mean, if you go to heaven, then you're rid of evil, right? Exactly, for sure. The reason uh, that bad things happen is because of it. we aren't good people. God had a plan for us for like a perfect life. And then we mess that up when we sinned. And because of that, there's repercussions of that. The question is kind of like on the lines of like, oh, if there's a good God, why wouldn't he just rid it all evil? And the answer to that question is he will one day. Us saying there's evil in this world is actually our hearts crying out for the good. Like it is us saying, we know that there is good, that God instilled in us goodness and that when it's distorted, that's our hearts, like us made in the image of God, crying out for the way in which God wanted the world to be. And then also he said the whole everything happens for a reason thing. What do you think about that statement when people say everything happens for a reason? I think it does. In the Bible, it never says uh, everything happens for a reason because that's not true. It's not God like out here dictating everything that it's gonna happen and you know all the bad things he's, he's the one playing out and stuff. Um, but rather what the Bible says is that for those who love God, all things happen for all things work together for good. So it's not saying all things are good. Not all things happen are good, but for those who love God, God can use it. And I'm confident to say enough because the Bible's confident to say enough that he will use it for quote unquote good. Yeah, I mean, anything that happens, good or bad, I mean, I'm sure that there's a lesson you can learn into it, you know? Not only is there a lesson to learn from it, God can use it to point it to himself and not just like for us to learn some sort of lesson, but rather to point us to him and the life he wants us to live and what he's done for us and Jesus.